Hey guys, Modix here. Uh, I want today. I want to do a video that I've been planning on doing for a while. I uh, basically just want to go over all the items that I could think of that Riven could build uh, that aren't uh, absolutely terrible. Uh, the way I sorted the items, uh, I couldn't really think of how I wanted to do it, but I just kind of grouped them uh, with other items that had like a similar purpose. Like I put the boots together. Life steal together, uh, lethality, etc. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, first, I have Ninja Tabby. Uh, Ninja Tabbies are probably the boots I buy the most often of any of the boots because usually you have an 80 top laner, uh, or even if you don't have an 80 top laner, it'll most likely be the jungle. Or you, you know that the AD carry is pretty much always going to be AD. So it always feels like there's going to be enough AD in the game for you to build Ninja Tabby. Uh, it's it's pretty much the reason you'll see me build it. Probably like, I would say like 85% of my games I build Ninja Tabby. With the other 15% probably just being Mercury Treads. I think those are the only two boots I really build. Uh, Ninja Tabbies are fine to rush. Uh, I usually only rush them if I'm behind or I just have a really good back with them, or it's really specifically strong against that character. Uh, say it's a Yasuo that I'm, I may be afraid of, and maybe I'm like a little bit down in farm, he seems like he, he knows what he's doing. Then Tabby's kind of destroy Yasuo, as in like, he, you can make mistakes, and it'll be okay. That's kind of what a lot of people do against Riven, is you can make mistakes with Ninja Tabby, and you will be okay. You just can't make multiple mistakes. Without Tabby's, you're going to be very squishy, you don't have enough mobility to run away from Riven, and vice versa as Riven. Uh, if, you, if you go in, you make a mistake, say like a Gnar or something, you're just going to get run down because you don't have the movement speed, and you don't have the the passive that reduces the damage from auto attacks. Uh, Ninja Tabbies are, are still a great item, they got a nerf not too, not too long ago, but like I said, they're still super strong. Um, so these are the boots you're most likely going to be getting. Next, I have Mercury Treads. Like I said, it's the these are the boots I only the only other boots I, I usually wound up getting. Uh, Mercury Treads. Usually, you don't really get them as much for the magic resistance uh, as the tenacity. I really liked the, t the tenacity. I don't know if it got nerfed a long time ago because I, I used to build Mercury Treads more. I can't remember why I stopped building them. Maybe I just realized Ninja Tabbies, um, how strong they are against AD champions. Or maybe Ninja Tabby's got buffed. I don't really remember the reason, but uh, Mercury Treads, they, they feel fine. It's just, it doesn't feel like it has enough stats besides Tenacity. Like, I don't I don't mean Tenacity. Um, I don't, I'm not saying it's not strong. It just doesn't feel like it helps you as in, like, resistance. Like, if it had more magic resistance, I would build it a lot more. The magic resistance just feels too lackluster, whereas Ninja Tabby, both of the passives help you in actual combat. Uh, for numbers, you know, tenacity is, is just something to help you get out of crowd control, which I guess in essence helps you in combat, but I'm um, talking raw numbers, it, it always feels like Ninja Tabbies just do more for you. Uh, so I, I usually try to get away, away with the Ninja Tabbies if I can. Uh, times I'll, I'll build Merc Treads are when they have so much crowd control that just, like QSS, will not help, uh, which is usually just like a TF. Because QSS, you can only you can only use it one time. You know it's done. It's like a minute and a half cooldown. Um, if you know that they're going to have a lot of uh, point and click CC that you can't dodge in team fight, like twist the fate cards. Uh, that, that's just like a big one that always comes to my head. I'm, every time I see a twist fate, I'm like, damn, I'll probably I'm probably going to have to build Murtreads this game. Uh, but there are, there are a lot of ones out there. You just kind of have to look at their CC and be like. Alright, I, I really need to nasty boots this game. You, you always want to look to see if you can get away with Ninja Tabbies. Because usually your top laner is going to be AD and you need to be able to beat them guaranteed 1v1. Or even him and his jungler 1 versus 2. Next boots I have are Ionian Boots of Lucidity. Um, I think these boots are pretty garbage on Riven since they got changed a while back ago. Um, they used to give 15% CDR, I used to build it all the time at that time. Uh, now they put a lot of the gold into reducing summoner spell cooldowns. Uh, I don't really I, I don't really value that that much. I like the mastery, but 
I, just, I don't feel like that works well. Um, what's... It, okay, how, how do I explain this? With Riven, Flash and Teleport... I, I know the Flash is very important. And that's the only... Okay, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not talking about this right. How do I want to go with this? I want to say they're just like not gold efficient. But it's not even just that. It's also just like it doesn't give you any combat stats. Which I feel Riven needs to play right now. You'd only get these boots if you were building damage. This sh straight damage. Like full lethality. Which I, I just think is pretty bad right now. It's too risky. Um... And you would just want your flash up to, for 10% less cooldown, which just seems terrible. 10% just doesn't seem like much at all to me. Uh, I feel like I would use the stats so much better and another item. And there's so many other great items that you would want the CDR for. Is is a is a big issue. It's like, okay, you get the 10% CDR early, but now you can't build like a death stance if you had 10% CDR on your runes. You're gonna have to swap out an item when you already want the items that. And give you CDR like Cleaver and Death Dance are just are just phenomenal for Riven or Yo Moons. They're all great, and Ionian Boots make you have to take one of those things out. Um, I just really think these boots are pretty bad for Riven right now. I, I think in time that once they get changed, they'll probably uh, they always do seem to find a time where they are strong on Riven because obviously CDR is going Riven. Maybe next season when CDR. Um, you can overcap CDR. I think it's it might be really strong then. I'm really looking forward to see what I can do next season with the new runes. But for now, just stay away from Ionian boots. Uh, next we have Black Cleaver. I think this is Riven's single most core item. A lot of people seem to, seem to think that or seem to underrate the Cleaver, even though they they know it's good. They want to try to get away with it by building uh, full damage. They don't like the health on it. Um, they don't, they, maybe they see 40 AD, they don't value the passive against squishies. Um, I think the passive is completely fine against squishies. I, I think, uh, when I say people are underrating it, I, I mean, a lot of times they get it second instead of first. A big reason I think Cleaver is so core on Riven is because it gives 20% CDR, um, the AD and health are, are both just great stats on Riven, uh, but most importantly, I think the CDR. Like, I, in one item, getting 20% CDR, there's no other item that that Riven can build and that gives her 20% CDR. Death Dance is a completely fine item, but I feel like both items, you will be able to kill an enemy, except Cleaver gives you more CDR to either run away from somebody or to just have your ult on a lower cooldown. I always feel like I can do more with Cleaver. Also, it just lets you get away with more with health. Uh, like I said, if, you, if you're like trying to run away from a gang. So, if you can kill them with both, why would you ever want the squishier item that gives you less CDR than Cleaver? Just because it's easier to kill someone? Because you have more damage? Maybe because of the sustain? I, I don't really know. Um, I, I pretty much always go Cleaver first. I think it's... The best I I think it will always be core on Riven until the passive gets nerfed. I mean, if if it does, I don't know if it will because Cleaver is kind of a necessary item uh, to be in the game. Um, but until it does get changed, I believe it will always be a core item on Riven. Uh, next we have Dust Dance. Um, I love Dust Dance. I mean. Uh, I think a lot of people like Death Dance on, on Riven right now. I used to build it before it, it got buffed, even though it was pretty suboptimal. Now it's just a fantastic item on Riven that you can build every game if you want. It competes with other 10% uh, CDR items for your other slot. There are a lot of other items uh, that will go into, like Yomus and Mulva and Mortius and whatnot, that you can build instead. Uh, well, I guess we can talk about what the Death Dance does that the others don't. Uh, one is that it gives 80 AD, which is uh, pretty much the highest AD item besides like a Bloodthirster. I I'm pretty much comparing this to the other 10% CDR items that it's competing with. Um, the other ones give Lethality, this one gives AD, um, where it gives you like a bigger shield and whatnot. I think the AD is, it's also great for pushing mini waves in. 
Uh, one, it's one of the reasons I like AD more than Lethality is because it helps you push waves or clear camps, which seems to be very underrated. Also gives you bigger shields. Um, one of the best things about this dance is it's passive. Um, I, I guess both passes, but the one I was thinking about is uh, the one where you heal from your spells because uh, obviously Riven has three different spells that deal physical damage and only Death Dance allows you to start healing from those spells. You don't heal for that much because they are AoE, but it's a lot more than you would, you would think. It works very similar to the the red elixir that you can get uh, later on in the game. I'm trying to think what else I want to talk about with Death Dance. Um, one of the cons with Death Dance is it is expensive. 3500 is a ton of gold, another reason why I don't buy it first item usually, or ever, uh, because it's 500 gold more than Cleaver for 10% less CDR. The item is great, but it just seems a little bit overkill for getting first item. It's harder to build into, it's less forgiving. Um, I, th I think that stance, I, I really think you can just build that in Cleaver every game. And you will be okay at least. It won't always be optimal, but it will always be good enough. Uh, next, I have Yomu's Ghost Blade. This is the pretty much the only other item I get instead of Death Dance occasionally. Uh, the reason I will get Yomu's over Death Dance is usually because of how much gold I back with if I have a great Yomu's Ghost Blade bag. Uh, sometimes I, I build a Warhammer and I get. I back with 700 gold, get two long swords. The next back, I might have just enough for Yomu's Ghost Blade, um, and I'm just trying to power spike. It's usually the time I'll most likely get the Yomu's Ghost Blade because the Yomu's Ghost Blade has the best build path. It's just a whole bunch of long swords, which is what Riven wants. Uh, so when you just back on a whole bunch of long swords, sometimes it's the only item you can get, and you're like, I need to get an item now, and that's that's what Yomu's uh, helps a ton with. Yoma's Ghost Blade it is a completely fine item to build instead of Death Dance. Um, it's just a d pretty different playstyle, and there are two like there are less situations where it's going to be as optimal as Death Dance because Death Dance is going to be better um, in combat for you know for a one one versus one one versus two one versus three. Yoma's is it's going to be better in an extended trade. Yoma's Ghost Blade. Is going to be better for the smaller trades. Maybe you just you see somebody called out like a squish, you, you just kill them super easily, and the movement speed is great on, on the ch kind of change Ghost Blade. They recently, I believe, they doubled the out of combat movement speed for Yoma's Ghost Blade, which is great from running around, and you know it still has the same active. It's just a shit ton of movement speed, and I kind of undervalued it when it got changed. Because I didn't think that a combat moon speed would be super useful, but um, it's it's actually really strong still. Um, I never thought it was bad before, and it, it's kind of similar to how it was before. But I still I still think Yomas is great. The only reason I'm not really building is because Death Dance kind of fits my my playstyle more of where I'm split pushing. Uh, I do think Death Dance is better if you plan on just split pushing and you want to try to. I'll play your opponents in a 1v1 one versus 2 or 1 versus 3. Uh, whereas Yoma's Ghost Blade is more for running around the map, trying to play um, more macro. Uh, so I think it's all for Yoma's. I think it's still a great item if you like it. You can go ahead and set this dance, but most of the time I think this dance is going to be better. And next is Dust Blade of Drakdar. This item was completely busted when they reworked it, along with the other lethality items. Um, they just they just put so much power into the passive, especially for ranged people. They didn't actually nerf it super hard for melee people. Um, but the thing is, Duskway of Drakdar isn't super great on Riven. As in like the passive, the, the Night Stalker passive, she, do, she doesn't really... Um, she doesn't really utilize it too well. She might get like one use out of it, whereas uh, somebody like Kha'Zix can get three uses out of it because of his ult. I mean, uh, that that's what the item is kind of made for. It's for people who get who go in and out of sight, um, and are just made a one-shot. Riven's not really 
a champion who's made the one shot. She fits more like the Death Dance playstyle. They're supposed to take on multiple people at once and like a um, a kind of extended uh, extended fight, I guess. Um, anyways, with that being said, that's way of Draktar. I really think the passive where you see an enemy ward is fantastic and very undervalued uh, because say you get like a, a sweeper uh, which I like to get the sweeper a lot around like level 11 or so um, you don't have to use the sweeper until you like that blackout passive is gone um, that's uh, I don't know why I love that so much uh, a lot of times I, I might use sweeper and I won't see any wards it's like okay I just wasted that it's a two minute cooldown or uh, maybe like a minute and a half, I don't know how long it is. Uh, that's where Dragdar, um, you get to see the ward first. It disables it. I mean, you clear a ward, and sometimes you get two, but usually you only get one. And then you get to clear the entire rest of the jungle with whatever you know is could be warded. Because you already know what bushes are not warded because of the dust wave Dragdar. After that pop, then you use uh, your sweeper. There, that means that entire side of the jungle is not warded, and that's a time where you can make a pick. I think that that passive is really strong. The Night Stalker passive is, I, I think, is really only great with Riven as soon as you get it, which m makes it to where I, I think that's why Dragdar is okay to get as a first item. Whereas I wouldn't really, I, I don't really like to get Yomu's first item. Um, that's why Dragdar, at least you could like keep running in and out of the bush top lane, or if you're a jungler, maybe you could rush it. I, I haven't really, uh, tested that out at all but I, I could see some viability in it besides that I, I think personally I just see the movement speed from Yomu's being stronger it's really just like another version of Yomu's just what you prefer out of it, it doesn't give you any any movement speed uh, but I, I think the blackout the passive where it disables wards and lets you see them um, is fantastic Next we have Edge of the Night. This is the other lethality item that got changed. I actually was, thought this item was going to be a little bit better since they changed magic resist to health. Before I thought it was uh, quite possibly the worst item in the game. You know, maybe next to home record or something. The stats are just absolutely terrible. Even if you couldn't, even if you found the team count where it was just like the stats were just perfect for it, you still want to build it because the stats are so bad uh, for how much it cost and, and the passive is just trash. So what they did is they changed magic resist to health which makes it to where um, you can build it more into AD comps, you don't have to wait until it's in uh, magic damage heavy comp because health works for both which makes uh, which kind of shows that health is usually better than magic resist. Uh, also, the health was valued better than the magic resist, so the item di is better now. It's clearly better than it was before, but it's still bad. It's still not good enough. I was hoping it would, and I, I tried it out quite a bit. Um, it's just, it's still underwhelming. It, it needs it needs some type of stat change, as in, like, it needs to go up, uh, I, I don't know, maybe more health. Um, maybe it could go up 5 AD. I, I would... I would say it could probably go up to 300 health, and then it would be a good item. It would be a viable item for Ribbon to build. O or they just need to change the passive. I think that's what they should do, is change the passive, because um, it just feels useless. It, it went from being uh, a pretty good active to completely broken, and then they just made it trash. And until they change this item, don't build it. Uh, next we have Mal Malmordius. One second, let me drink some water real quick. Okay, Mala Mortius is the other item that would, uh, I guess, rival the other 10% CDR items like Dust Dancing Yomu's or Dust Blade. Um, Mala Mortius is completely fine to get against AP Heavy Comps. You know, they got. Um, AP mid, AP top, AP jungle. Besides that, if they don't even have an AP jungle, I usually don't like to build this item. I I don't like the item on Riven. 
um, or even on a lot of people because I think the stats are relatively bad on it. But the problem is you don't have many options to build anything else. There, are, because like the only other item was Edge of the Night. You know, AD, AD and Magic is this. Uh, it also gives CDR. Um, but I, I feel like there's so many cons to the Mall of Amortius than I would want. Um, and it kind of needs to be like this because if this item was any better, it would be, it would be built way too often. Uh, which, with that being said, I think Hex Drinker is, fan is phenomenal. I think the, the stats on Hex Drinker are great. And it's great to buy a uh, first item against an AP top, but I don't like building it all the way into the Mall of Amortius. And what I'll do is sometimes I may just sit on the Hex Drinker and then just finish my, you know, the rest of my five items and just leave it on the Hex Drinker because I don't like finishing the Mall of Amortius. Um, that, that would make it to where you get Cleaver, Mall of Amortius, and this dance. Uh, you can even sit on the Hex Drinker and then just go to Stance and then finish Mole if you want, whichever feels best for you. Uh, I think I'm kind of finished talking about Mole by Morius. Uh, next is Ravenous Hydra. Oh, the next few items are going to be talking about like the, the Lifesteal items. Uh, Lifesteal is pretty strong on, on Riven. It's A lot of times it's a little bit overrated. It's really just about how strong the items are and like how efficient they are. There was a time where I was never building Hydra until recently, where it just went up uh, 5 AD, I believe. And that 5 AD was a lot for me to actually start building this item again, because I thought it was pretty terrible before compared to Titanic Hydra. Uh, even even now, I think that they're both great and they're both situational, but I usually wound up getting one or the other uh, every game if I can. Anyways, Ravenous Hydra, 80 AD, 12% lifesteal. Um, it's got the, the passive that um, hits everything around you, and um, if you're already a Riven main, you pretty much know that the active kind of works into your kid and uh, acts as an animation cancel. You can just kind of fit it in with any other ability uh, for pretty much for free damage with no extra time. Um, it competes with Bloodthirster. They're both ADAD. I mean, they're just high AD lifesteal items. So you're maybe thinking, like, what's the difference? How do I know what to build instead of the other? Um, the, I think the big difference for me uh, is that Bloodthirster gives 20% lifesteal and Ravenous gives 12, but Ravenous Hydra gives you the extra active that gives you a, more burst damage. I think Bloodthirster is uh, usually superior in the 1v1 because of the lifesteal, as long as they do not have Grievous Wounds. If they have Grievous Wounds, which, you know, people could build Executioner's Calling, which usually people wouldn't be building early before, so it didn't really matter. But now, you have an item that, uh, you know, just kind of hurts the Bloodthirster a lot, Bramble Vest. Uh, Every time you auto attack them, you're, you're just giving yourself grievous wounds, um, and that hurts the bloodthirster a lot. That's a big reason I stopped building bloodthirster uh, since the bramble vest came out. Is because every time I, if you build bloodthirster and you, you, your opponent can build bramble vest, like they're Darius or something, not everyone will build it. Uh, like like a Heimerdinger or top one and build it, so you, it's fine for that. But if you know that they can build Bramble Vest and you think they will, then I, I would say just don't even worry about the Bloodthirster. Because you might as well get, at le if you want a lifesteal item, just get Ravenous Hydra. Because the lifesteal getting cut doesn't matter as much since you're not pouring most of your gold into the lifesteal. Uh, you're going more for for like the active. You don't get as much value cut if you go with the Ravenous Hydra compared to the Bloodthirster. So recently, since the, the Bramble Vest came out, I've been doing Ravenous Hydra instead of Bloodthirster, whereas before I used to use Bloodthirster instead of Hydra. I think Bloodthirster is fantastic against people like Vladimir. I love Bloodthirster against Vladimir. Um, he usually never builds a an Executioner's Calling. It's also a matchup where he's tanky, 
uh, it's going to be a long long fight and it's all about sustain like who's sustaining through the fight the longest and bloodthirster will make you always win that uh, over the ravenous hydra just because of the lifesteal he'll never be able to kill you as long as he doesn't have grievous wounds because of your bloodthirster and you know vladimir he isn't going to be building world now because he gives mana and he may build a bramble vest but i've never seen him build it because you know thorn on him is just terrible um so against vladimir like i said or swain swain's another great one you know these are just two ap range people who just usually don't build grievous wounds although i guess swain could build morello i never see them do it so bloodthirster great against the, the it, it's like the the king of 1v1 items for I want, okay i want to say like for long sustained fights if they don't have a ton of armor that's why i'm saying like vladimir and health usually just have a whole bunch of health um Swain, I mean, I mean, like Darius, it's great against him if he isn't like if he couldn't build Bramble Vest. So if maybe Bramble Vest ever gets changed again, the, changed in the future, Bloodthirst may come back. For now, I think he should usually just stay away from it and uh, try to s stick with some other items. Uh, so yeah, I think Ravis Hydra just kind of a better, better choice right now. One thing I do want to say about Ravis Hydra is that. Uh, I don't think you should build it early. I think you should get your CDR first. Uh, it's okay to build third. Uh, most of the time, I probably build it fourth after GA. And the problem with the Ravenous Hydra early is he is uh, usually wound up getting the time at first, and, and time at is is a big purchase. It's kind of like you know, like the little mini Hydra. I think a lot of people overvalue the time out on ribbon once they learn that you can you know get the animation cancel in uh, the active it doesn't give any cdr if you look at time at the stats on it are really bad for how much it costs it, and that's really what you're looking for early game you're just looking for like raw numbers like you would just pick up a whole bunch of long swords if you could which is why old black cleaver was you know the king for ribbon it gives 20 ad for 1200 gold the health regen is just health regen is just a useless stat. Um, Twenty AD for for twelve hundred gold. On. If you think about that, a pickaxe is twenty five AD for eight hundred seventy five gold. So you're paying three hundred twenty five more gold, which is almost a long sword um, for five less AD. That's how much gold gold is being put into the passive and active. Do you really think the active and, and passive are are worth that much gold? For Riven, it's not. Uh, you see a lot of other champions do build time at, so you would think uh, Riven would. Uh, you, you'll see it a lot in, in like high elo or professional gameplay. You'll see a Shin with a time at. Uh, maybe like a Trundle with time at. But the reason these people get time at and, and Riven shouldn't is because they need the time at to push ways faster. Uh, they just... I, I, I wouldn't say like just like very recently, but since Bomby Cinder got nerfed, that's when tanks started building time at. It's because they need wa they need a way to pu to push the lane. They need to push the wave in. It's a lot of these champions that build time at early. It's because they don't have wave clear. Shin does not have wave clear. Trundle does not have enough wave clear to push fast enough. You need pressure. You need to be able to push waves fast. Um, and and this is an item that allows you to push on these champions that just don't have wave clear in their kit. Riven has her Q and W to push waves, and she usually builds damage. You do not need Tiamat to push the wave in. Uh, because Bomby Cinder was nerfed, I mean it got changed a bit. People aren't rushing Sunfire anymore. You just don't see that. That's that's why tanks are building Tiamat. In case you were curious, um, I, I think you shouldn't never build time at first item as Riven. Alright, let's move on to the other... Wait, okay, I can either go on to play the Ruin King or Titanic Hydra next. I'm gonna go ahead and do Blade the Ruin King just cause it's other lifesteal item. And this item, it, it may sound kinda troll, but it's it's really not that bad. Um, I actually used to build it when it first got changed, you know, when everybody was building board because it was so, they just, 
overloaded it, kind of like Drakthar. Um, I, ble I believe it gave like 3% more lifesteal, a lot of, uh, I think they took a lot of the stats out of the passive. The item it was just great for Riven for, for a while, only because it was great on everyone, it was just, it was just broken. Uh, they changed the gold on it too, I think that's what it was. It used to be 200 less gold, so it's just a really cheap source uh, of a finished 80 lifesteal item, which is, you know, those are two stats that Riven loves. And now I think it's trash, just because it's not OP. The item shouldn't work on Riven, so uh, that's pretty good. If you Now if you want a sustained lifesteal item, or, okay. Blade of the Ruin King is great in like sustained fights, right? Like you're just auditing them over and over, kind of like Vladimir Swain. Uh, but believe it or not, like Blade of or uh, Bloodthirster will actually be better against the champions you would actually want Blade of the Ruin King against now. Uh, so really, like the Blade of the Ruin King, the reason you would ever want this item would be for like the active to cut people around. But Riven doesn't need more mobility. Uh, she would only ever use it to like usually run away from somebody. She doesn't need to catch up to a carry. It, it's not worth putting the gold into it and wasting uh, an item slot on this item. Uh, I used to use this against Sin, so that was about it. But now I would just never build this item. Which is trash since it, it's not OP anymore. Oh, also uh, Mercurial Scimitar. I forgot about that one for a lifesteal item. Mercurial is. Just another high AD lifesteal item, but obviously this item is used for QSS, I shouldn't need to explain that. The item is great, it's not something you should build every game. Um, I usually build this when... N not as much for the team fight, but I would say if I can't kill the person that I'm splitting against, especially if I'm ahead. If I'm if I'm like 4-1, and one, you know, like I'm the biggest person in the game. I, I can put a lot of power in the, in the split pushing, but I, I can't kill the other person 1v1 because I can't kill them because of CC, then that's usually why I wound up getting this. Uh, a good example would be TF. Uh, what will happen is usually usually the top laner won't even be splitting against me because because I'm big enough, I can just die them on the turret. But Twisted Fate is somebody who can just gold card you, card you and run away if you try to kill him, right? Um, so with this item, Twisted Fate gold cards you, you just pop the Mercurial Scimitar and you, you just one shot them. That's it. Uh, there are a lot of other champions that it, it kind of goes with. I mean, I could give you like a whole list uh, of champions who might CC you and just get away. And this item just completely prevents that. Maybe like a Camille stuns you and then walks away. No, you just QSS and you, and you kill her. It's, it's kind of like a snowball thing. Uh, to make sure you can you can split push that uh, you can actually kill the person when you're split pushing so that you don't just CC you and walk away. Um, item is great on Riven. I try not to build it too early unless I have to, which is really just against champions like Twisted Fate, um, who just have so much crowd control at every point in the game and who are near you uh, a lot of points in time. If they have point and click CC. That's a big reason I'll, I'll build this. If they have a, like a hard CC, but it's something I can dodge, I try to stay away from it because I know like I can outplay that. But I'm trying to think if it's like a fiddle fear, then he, he'll just press Q on you and walk away. I mean, uh, there are quite a few champions who can do that, where it's just like very little counterplay. You can't really do anything about it. Mouse the Harl, uh, there's quite a few things. You just it's just something where you pretty much have to build QSS against. Uh, I do think I see people build QSS too often. It, it's a rough build path. The the Mercurial Scimitar, I think, and the stats aren't that great on it. But this is pretty much my alternative to Maul Mortius if I need magic resist and AD. Um, most of the time, I, I try to get away from this if I can, though, because it's very expensive and doesn't give you the stats that you would really want. I, I mean, the stats are, are what you want, but they're not high enough because so much of the gold is pushed into the QSS, which is completely fine for the item. Uh, next, I wanted to go into Titanic Hydra. I didn't know if I wanted to do this right after Ravenous Hydra. Um, anyways, this is very similar to Ravenous Hydra. It's just kind of the health alternative. 
uh, it gives you health instead of lifesteal. Both items are completely fine for kind of snowballing with Riven. Uh, pretty much only ever build this item though if I'm building a Sterix gauge with it. If I'm going with more of like a bruiser build, I usually never build damage and then insert a Titanic Hydra into it. I would, I would rather just get like another damage item or get like a, a Guardian Angel, which is, you know, still a damage item. Just, it's just another way of getting defense. Um, I think Titanic Hydra is a great item. It just doesn't fit with, you know, like the traditional Riven build where like a lot of people go Ravenous Hydra, Guardian Angel, Death Dance, Cleaver. I, I, think it, I think it's best if you're going with other health items like a Sterix Gauge. Um, what's, what's another one? I, I think it's it, just with Sterix Gauge. Which I, I think Sterix Gauge is completely fine in Riven. Um, I think if you're building Sterix Gauge, you should get Titanic Hydra instead of Ravenous Hydra. I, 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 I would hope to never see a Riven build in Sterix Gauge and Ravenous Hydra in the same game. Because... Uh, Titanic Hydra and Sterix Gauge complement each other so well. I don't think I really need to go too much into depth about what Titanic Hydra does. It's very similar to Ravenous Hydra. I pretty much went over that. It pretty much shares the same concepts with Ravenous Hydra. Um, in time to get it, except maybe this this item is pretty expensive. So sometimes you don't want to get you don't want to get this like third item. Um, I would get Sterix Gauge before this, because Sterix Gauge is so cheap, uh, and then maybe get this 5th or 6th item. Um, next I have Guardian Angel. I underrated this a bit when it first came out. I think it was because the armor was so low. Um, but I, I have a better idea about, about how it is right now. I think the item is good, but I think... Lower elo and please don't think I'm like flaming anybody. I I never mean <laughs> to insult people when I, I bring in other elos. There I, I think there are there are items that are better in certain elos than others. Like Mercurial Scimitar, for example. I used to be so bad at using the active, like I, I would always forget about it that it was not worth it for me to build until I figured out how to use it. Or like hourglass. If you can't figure out how to use the item correctly, or Yomus. Yomus is hard to use in Death Stance. That's why I just say, like, go Death Stance. It's it's easier to use. That's why I suggest it for lower elos. Uh, Guardian Angel. I actually think fits that example. Because Guardian Angel is an item where if you, you're not in the right spot when the passive procs, the gold that you put into the passive is useless. If you die in a side lane while split pushing, and your team doesn't get any objectives off of it, you you pretty much just lost the pass. Like they just kill you twice. It's like a bad mercy ult in Overwatch. You just die twice. Um, uh, I mean they'll just. Uh, it's not hard for you to die. Um, in, in like a one v three, if you get caught out after your GA pops, you're not just gonna going to make some crazy escape. They're just gonna CC you as soon as you get out of GA. Um. The item is great in a team fight because what happens is you go in, uh, you might kill a carry. If you like flash on a carry, you kill a carry. They're gone. Uh, say the rest of your, uh, his friends, you know, they killed you. They pop your GA though. All this time while they're sitting here four seconds waiting for you to come back up, your teammates are just whacking their entire front line, which uh, in most elos. They're pretty much just sitting there waiting for your GA to come back up. They're doing nothing. They're not even trying to hit other people while they're waiting for your, your GA to come back up. They're just going to sit there and stare at you. Um, so GA is an item that, like, in, in a team fight, uh, allows your, your teammates to, to do a lot. You can it, it makes it to where you can do a whole bunch and then let your teammates kind of clean up for what you couldn't make up. And then you probably won't die twice if your GA pops in the middle of a fight. Because 4 seconds, it's basically saying like 4 seconds of invulnerability, you know? Like a, a cane ult, or a, kind of like an hourglass. Uh, it's, it kind of shares the same purpose as that. But once the passive is down, it's pretty bad. 
I mean, the, the stats are just kind of mediocre. But, uh, but the cost is really low. That's something I really like about GA is that the cost is really low. And it's kind of like a, a power spiking item because you can just kind of force a team fight with it. Um, and just get the, pa the passive. It has like a whole bunch of gold value into it. And you'll probably win that team fight just because uh, you got GA very early. Because it's, it's an early power spike. So I do think GA is really great. I try to get it early if I can. Sometimes you can get it last item, but I don't really recommend it. Uh, if, if it takes that long for you to get your, your GA, then it's, it's probably not worth it. It's only a, It would only be worth it if you know um, the next team fight is going to be huge. And you need to try to just kill somebody and hope the rest of your team, like maybe have some hyper carries that can do a lot of work while you, the enemy team is waiting for you to come back out to kill you again. Um, but I, 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 don't rec I don't recommend this item if you just want to split push. Um, because then you'll just waste gold into the past. So you might as well, you, you would be better off getting like uh, a Ravenous Hydra or um, a Bloodthirster or a Last Whisper item than getting this Guardian Angel. Next I have Mortal Reminder. Mortal Reminder is very similar to Lord Dominic's regard. I guess we kind of talk about both of them at the same time. Um, they both give the same amount of armor penetration and 50 AD. Um, I, the only difference would be the passive. I pretty much try to build this item every game. Unless their their entire team comp, you, you know they're just not going to build any armor at all. Maybe they have range top, range mid, and they don't even have a tank jungler. Uh, at that point, more, I mean, the last whisper items just aren't aren't that useful. Um, but I would say 95% of the games, these items are great. Mainly just for the bonus armor penetration. The bonus armor penetration is pretty much the only reason I get it. Um, I mean, I mean, the 50 AD is great. It's just a whole bunch of damage, and it's pretty cheap. 2600 is pretty cheap. I mean, that's like Steric's Cage. It gives you. A lot more damage you don't expect, but that's all it gives you. All it is is damage. Um, the only reason I usually build this early, maybe like third or fourth item, is if I get a great use out of uh, Mortal Reminder. Say they have a Vladimir or a Swain. Swain is a uh, is one of the few champions I'll build this item third. Um, or if they have a tank, like a, I, I, when I say a tank, I mean like a big tank, like Malphite. Or Shin, these people who just build only, like, not even a Shin who builds Titanic Hydra. I mean, a, a Shin who builds, like, only health, only, only armor. Uh, because you need to be able to kill these people fast. Oh, also Scion. Scion's a great example, especially since people just started playing Scion this patch. Um, he, he gets extra health. Um, and while I'm, when I'm talking about these big tanks, I'm actually not talking about more Reminder. I'm talking about Lord Dominic's regard. Um... I'm talking about both of these items at once. Moral Reminder, uh, you can build early against, like I said, you can build it early against Swain and Vladimir. Uh, well, I'm sure there's some other champions out there, maybe like Kane. Kane has a lot of healing. At, uh, against Kane, because he doesn't build a lot of armor, I would probably just stick with the Executioner's Calling and then just finish your other items and finish Moral Reminder later. Whereas if you're against Scion, Shin, Malphite, uh, an early Lord Dominic's Regard is fine. And you know they, they're going to be getting a lot of armor. Uh, besides that, just try to fit this into your build. You usually don't get this early. Try to get it like 5th item, 6th item. Um, unless you're against somebody, like I said, like a big tank or something. Um, next I have Steric Cage. A lot of people don't like Steric Cage. Uh, I think it's because... The passive, which is pretty important, is base AD rather than I, I guess bonus AD. Because it's only base AD, it only applies to your auto attacks and does not give you AD ratios for your Q, W, E, and R. Doesn't give you it doesn't give you a bigger shield. Doesn't give you more damage on your spells. Only only auto attacks. Um, so that means this item really has to make up in other areas. And I, I think a lot of times it does. Uh, the First off, the base AD is actually a lot. I don't remember the math on it. I did a while back ago. 
Um, I believe it's around 30 base, C, base AD at, at the time you build it. It's usually maybe like like a pickaxe or so. Like I said, I, I, w I wouldn't trust that math, but it, it's been a while. I, I just remember doing a lot of the math when the item first got changed, um, along with a lot of the other tank items. The item has actually got a, a ton of value in it, as long as you're building other health. Uh, it gives you 400 health. The lifeline passive is okay. Well, hang on, let me read this real quick. Okay. A little confused. Okay, so let's just talk about <laughs> the other passive. Grants increased size, 30% additional base AD. That's pretty much just double the damage that your Cyrix Gage was giving you before. Yeah, I remember that being a lot more AD than I actually expected. And the shield. The shield is huge. It's 75% of your bonus health for 8 seconds. 75% of your bonus health? If you're building any other health, there's so much value in that. Um, so you build like a dead man's play, it's like 425 health, right? You get an extra 300 health just from the Sterex gauge and the team fight. Um, it is a, a decaying shield, it's something that goes out, but usually in a team fight, I mean people are people aren't going to ignore you while you have the shield, and you're probably not running away while you have the shield being popped. So that shield is most likely going to get all of its value out of it, um, as someone like Riven. So, if you build other health with this item, you're going to get a lot of value out of the Sterex Fury. It used to be uh, based off of your total health, which made it to where it didn't really matter if you built tank or not. You just kind of build it with a whole bunch of other damage. Whereas now, it's an item that you should only ever build if you have at least two other health items. Which, Revan builds Cleaver, right? She gets... Uh, I believe that's 400 health. I can check real quick. Yes, it's 400 health. Um, and then you have... If you build another item, you like Titanic Hydra, I say you should always build those two together. That gives you 450 health. The Sterex Gauge is giving you 400 health. That's 1,250 health just from those three items. And you could build another health item if you want. Uh, that's... That's just like, it's like 900 health just in the shield that you're getting from Sterex Gauge. That's a lot of value in the Sterex Gauge for only 2600 gold. Um, as long as you're, you're remembering to auto attack a lot in fights, which you should be if you're going, it's like, like a bruiser build with Sterex Gauge, which you don't, you should only ever be building with other health items. Um, I, I think this item is pretty strong. A lot stronger than people think. Um... Next item is Frozen Mallet. This item sounds a little bit troll, and I, I rarely build it anymore because I haven't been doing the Bruiser build in a while. Uh, but there are times where it's okay. A lot of people I see they talk about the a Bruiser Ribbon build. This is like their core, their core item, whereas it's it's not as strong as Derek Gauge. The problem is the item is very expensive. It's 3100, 500 more than Sterex Gauge, 300 more health, and it gives you 30 AD, which is pretty low AD, and you trade passes for the little slow that it gives you, but Riven doesn't really have an issue with chasing people down at all. That's never an issue with her. And if you're going with a, a tanky build, you're not trying to really chase people down, I guess. You're just trying to auto attack as much as you can. Um, like in team fights, you're not really worried about kiting people around. You're, you're just hitting who, whoever's next to you. Um, Frozen Mallet, when I do build it, obviously it's only with Sterex Gauge. The health on Frozen Mallet is great for the Sterex Gauge. Uh, you know, it takes 75% of 700. That's like uh, it's like 500 or so, somewhere somewhere around there. Um, you get. Uh, you get like a 500 health shield or extra shield onto the Sterex gauge just from building Frozen Mallet. You know, it's all you also get the health from it. But a lot of times, I, I don't really wind up building this item because there are better items to get. But I found I have found the situation where I do like to build Frozen Mallet into the Bruiser build, and that's against AP comps because I, I told you I don't like building Maul on Mortius. Um, I don't think Mercurial Scimitar should be used in a Bruiser build. Because you don't really care about the QSS that much, because you're kind of 
you're trying to soak up damage, you're not trying to be slippery. You pretty much just want a whole bunch of stats. Uh, like combat stats, like health and AD. And Frozen Mallet is completely fine for that. Um, health health works against the AP and AD, so it's, it's kind of like a side stat. Uh, something you can substitute magic resist for. Um, so I, I usually wind up getting Frozen Mallet after Steric Gauge. If they have... Uh, Maybe like like three AP or something. If I'm going with the Bruiser build, I do think it's fine, but I don't think it should ever be used instead of Sterix Gauge. It should only be used in conjunction with it. And I want to say right for before, before I get off this item that this item should be built more for the stats and not for the passive. Uh, Phantom Dancer. Okay, this item kind of sounds silly. Uh, but they're actually having some people who used to build it and maybe still do. Uh, the item is pretty strong, actually. Uh, the reason, I think, is because of its passive, the 12% damage reduction. Just really strong in a 1 versus 1. You know, you get the crit chance. Movement speed is pretty good for running around, it's similar to Yomu's. Attack speed is relatively useless, usually only good for uh, hitting turrets. But... It's actually pr pretty good for a 1v1. I don't build any more. I, I try it out a bit, but I think I would always rather have some of the the buffed items. You know, they, they uh, since I used to build it, they buffed Ravenous Hydra, they buffed Bloodthirster. They try and kind of changed the Last Whisper items a bit. They gave them like five more AD. They just buffed a, a lot of the, the other items to where uh, I don't ever see a time where I should build Phantom Dancer. Instead of something else now. You know, they also, you know, rework Guardian Angel. Um, I, I think the only time you would ever use this is with this next item, Essence Reaver. <laughs> These items actually work so well together. Phantom Dancer and Essence Reaver. Essence Reaver also signs, ca uh, signs, sounds kind of silly. Uh, I think both of the items are bad by themselves, but together, they're actually relatively strong. Essence Reaver, 70 attack damage, 20% crit, and 10% CDR, uh, and it has the passive where you gain additional cooldown reduction depending uh, on your critical, your additional critical strikes, right? Um, so basically, uh, you build Essence Reaver first for high AD. 70 AD is a lot. You know, the, the crit is lackluster and you get 70% CDR. It's basically just like a worse death stance. But then you get Zeal. And Zeal gives you 20% crit. And 20% crit is, uh... With the Essence Reaver, it gives you 10% more CDR to where you're at 30% CDR. Once you get the Phantom Dancer, that's 30% additional crit. That's the max for the Essence Reaver to proc its maximum uh, additional CDR. You wound up getting 30% CDR from the Essence Reaver, and you're you're at max CDR once you have Essence Reaver PD. So you put 10. I mean, you put uh, this is all assuming you put 10% CDR in your runes. So I, I actually think Essence Reaver Phantom Dancer is not terrible. I don't think it's good. <laughs> Or I shouldn't say not good, but I don't think it's better than some of the other stuff. It's fun. I think it's kind of funny how this is actually just not as troll as it sounds. Uh, just because you, it's only because of Essence Reaver. It's only because you get CDR with the Phantom Dancer, which is also just happens to be another CDR item that isn't terrible in Riven. Uh, so if you ever want to try out Crit Riven, Essence Reaver in the PD, try it out a bit. It was pretty fun. It's not great though. I wouldn't. I wouldn't use it to try to climb. Uh, because we're talking about crit, also have Infinity Edge on here. 70 AD, 20% crit, critical strike, bonus damage is increased by 50%. This item is terrible on Riven. Even with Essence Reaver and Phantom Dancer, it's bad. I would rather just get at this like at this point in the game. Like you, you already you already built. Um, Essence Reaver and Phantom Dancer. At this point, I'd either want Sustain, might want a Guardian Angel, or it's passive. I might want 
a Last of Us Bra item, I usually never want, like, I never even need to get 70% crit instead of 50%. Yeah, it's just not, it's not worth the gold. It's sorry for 100, it's, it's super expensive. Um, I mean, you would, do, you would do this in, like, a normal game if you were trolling, but, uh, when I say Essence or your Phantom Dancer aren't bad, this item is bad. Even in conjunction with the other two crit items. Don't build Infinity Edge and Ranked. Okay. Now we're getting to the boring section. Where we talk about tank items. And no one likes to talk about tank items. Especially if you're a Raven player. So let's get into the most viable items first. First item is Knight's Vow. A lot of you might know me as the guy who kind of innovated Knight's Vow on Riven. It was only because I just saw, I just actually looked at the stats on the item one day and deemed it OP. Because <laughs> I, I did some of the math on it and it really was super strong. Back then it used to give 400 health instead of 350 and then it gave a little bit of health regen for CDR. Uh, but the cost was, I, I believe, the same. I believe it's always been 2300. Um, so how good is Knight's Vale on Riven? I actually built it less than I used to, but at the same time, it's better than it used to be if you use the CDR, and that's the issue. Before it gave a flat, like just only health and armor and the health regen. I mean, the health regen was useless. Um, so the thing is, you could have max CDR and not have to worry about the extra CDR conflicting with it. Feel like you wasted stats with it. And then they swapped health regen for CDR. At this point, it was it, it became broken. Like the item was just completely insane. Um, because it made it to where even even somebody like like even if you were already max CDR on Riven, it would still be great to get this item. Because the rest of the stats were, it was already a, a great item, and then they just made it broken. And that's when everybody else started to build Knight's Vow. You, you saw junglers building Knight's Vow. This is where kind of like the tank meta kind of came out. So the support uh, jungler, the support tank jungler meta like Gragas and J4. You would see supports build this every game. I mean, everybody was building Knight's Vow, even top laners. Um, but the thing is. I don't like playing Riven without the 10% CDR and runes, and I pretty much always get Cleaver and another damage CDR item, because I think she needs a secondary damage item, and Knight's Vow doesn't cut that for you, uh, to where I don't really build these three items. I, I, I did build it before, but now they made it to where the health went down instead of taking the CDR out. Uh, to make it, you know, more of a support item instead of something where it just gives you a whole bunch of health and armor. Now, I still think it's fine on Riven, but I wouldn't build it unless somebody... I mean, there are quite a few rules to building this item on Riven now. Whereas before, you would just build it whenever because no one else would. Uh, first, you want to make sure nobody else on your team has it. Unless there are really two carries that are very important and you just want to put them on two different people. Because the item is still great. Two, I think now you should look to try to make use out of the CDR. Only because they took 50 health away from the item. That's pretty big. That's uh, it's about like 125 or 130 in gold value that they took off the item. To basically make it to where they're saying, yes, we want this item to have CDR and less health. Um, and now you, you need to make sure you get use out of the CDR. So, if you have 30% CDR... Maybe you ran magic resist in your runes, or something else from instead of CDR. You built Cleaver, Death Dance, and then you want to get an item that gives you health and armor. I mean, Knight's Vow would be the perfect item for you. But I don't run into that situation anymore because I always run 10% CDR in my runes. I don't like uh, not having 10% CDR in my runes. But if, this item is something you can build. Um, and it is something you can build if nobody builds. Um, Knight's Vow and you still think you you need the Knight's Vow and, and everybody else just refuses to build it and you're still over capping CDR I mean 50 health isn't the worst cut the, the worst cut of all time 
item's still great. It's it's still insane right now. Uh, to where you, you, you could still build it, but I don't think it's something uh, that you have to build all the time anymore like I used to. I, I didn't really go over what the passive did for people who like don't really know what the night spell does. Um, the passive is if your partner is nearby, gain 20 armor, 15% bonus movement speed while moving towards them. The movement speed doesn't really matter too much. 20 armor is pretty important. Um, and a team fight, I mean, the stats are. They used to be uh, basically the same as like a Dead Man's Plate or a Sunfire Cape, except it was it's 600 gold cheaper. Because those items are 2900, Knights of Valley is 2300. That was why the item was so strong. Uh, it's because it was so cheap. Um, also, the other passive is when you're near them, uh, it's pretty much going to be in the team fight. Uh, heal for 12% of the damage your partner deals to chance. Okay, so let me, let me actually like to go over the other part first. 12% of the damage that your partner takes when you're near them gets directed to you. And so you're taking, it, you usually feel, you, it's like a support item. You, as Riven, you usually don't want to take more damage into you, but you'd only ever be building Knight's Vow if you were building other health items with it, like a Sterics Gauge. You know, this item is great with the Sterix Gauge. It's only ever be really used in a Bruiser build. Uh, so you're taking 12% of their damage. But at the same time, you heal for 12% of their damage. Um, and so you would think, okay, um, I guess it's kind of equal, right? Well, say you put on 80 carry, right? Your 80 carry should be dishing out more damage than he's taking. Because he doesn't have that much health. The whole time, he should be firing at people. Uh, you also have to take in that you have shields. I think this item is better on people that have shields to where the damage that gets redirected to them goes into your shield and makes your shield um, more effective. Because Riven Shield is only a second and a half long. Uh, and so you want to make sure you get as much damage put into that shield as you can if you're a bruiser. If you're squishy, you usually use the shield basically for the mobility. Uh, which is why I don't really think she should be played in that playstyle. I think a lot of the value in the shield is just straight up in the numbers because it, it is a beefy shield. And if you're uh, if you're building Knight's Vow, it just makes your shield more effective. Uh, you're just always shielding and always trying to put damage into that shield. Uh, so you usually want the healing for much more than you actually take because a lot of damage goes into your shield and your partner should be dealing more damage than they're taking. 12% um, it, it isn't that much but it's it's probably a little bit more than you would think. Uh, also the reason I like this item more than stone plate uh, at least before was because both items are super effective when you're uh, when you have the special condition applied to them whereas you know knight's vow has the partner concept where you gain value when you're next to your partner and gargoyle of stone plate uh, has more value when you're near what i think like three near uh nearby enemies knight's vow doesn't punish you as much for not being next to your partner you only lose 20 armor and you don't get the modus movement speed when moving towards them that's really not that big gargoyle of stone plate i mean I, the item is terrible for splitting because you, it puts so much of the value into being next to three nearby enemy champions, which pretty much never happens unless you're in a team fight. Uh, that's why I, I don't like stone plate on Riven. Uh, I build it very rarely, very situationally. Um, I think Knight's Vow you can split, like you can feel free to split with this item. Don't feel like you have to team fight because of the the partner thing it, it's not as um as required as the cargo of stone plate next i have dead man's plate um i think dead man's plate is usually the best item riven can build if she wants health and armor i really like building this item if i'm bruiser riven um, you know, it just has great stats as in health and armor. I wouldn't say great stats. And the stats are just fine. Um, but I really like the passive on her. You know, mo the movement speed's great on Riven. 
But something I like is that um, it doesn't just instantly um, go to go to nothing when you hit a minion or something um, like like you kind of used to. It kind of it just gradually st it kind of stays up for a bit, and it's really strong for chasing people down. The movement speed is is really it's just a ton. I mean. Uh, if an AD carry's ever caught out of position, you're never just going to get kited uh, because you have Dead Man's Plate. Uh, with that being said, I, I still don't like straight up tank items on Riven unless they have a ton of value in them, like Knight's Vow. So I usually don't build it. Uh, but if I am going with the Bruiser build, I may build this item. I don't think you'd ever build a straight up tank item if the rest of your items are damaged, if you're, if you're going with. Ravenous Hydra, uh, Guardian Angel, uh, something of that sort. But if you were to build this item uh, against like a super heavy AD team comp, or if you're going with a Bruiser Riven build, th this is the item I would go uh, over over some Fire Cape. You know, it's it's other alternative. I would never build some Fire Cape on Riven. Next is Random Zomen. It's the other health armor item that's. You know, it's just similar to Dead Man's Plate and Sunfire, except they made this item have a very unique purpose, which is reducing critical strike damage. I usually, actually, I actually build this item even when I'm building damage sometimes. Only if they have like a lot of crit, but I still feel like I need damage. I don't like to do that, it doesn't feel good, but sometimes it's required uh, if they have 3 crit. If they have like a mastery jungle, you know, a normal AD carry, you know, like they have like Zaya who's building crit, they have a Yasuo. And the Yasuo is the big one. Um, I only ever build this item if they have a Yasuo for the most part. And they, their AD carry has to be somebody who builds crit. And hopefully their jungler builds crit too. Usually they don't. Maybe if they have like a mastery. Um. If they don't have a lot of crit, then don't worry about building this item, just get... If you want to get a tanky item like this, just get Dead Man's Plate or Knight's Vow. Uh, the stats be besides the critical strike reduction, pretty bad for only 400 health. And it's pretty expensive. I, I think that's pretty much all, all there is to this item, is only, only build this if they have a lot of crit. With that being said, if they do, it's actually very strong. 20% uh, reduction from critical strike damage is pretty big. It completely destroys Yasuo. Since, uh, it, even if, if you like get it early, because he gets that 100% crit a lot faster than everybody else since his crit is doubled. Um, it just makes him do a lot less damage to you. What else do we have? We have Gargoyle Stoneplate. I talked about this kind of earlier with the Knight's Vow. Uh, the difference in this item is that instead of health, it gives magic resistance. Uh, it gives the same amount of armor out of combat. Or, sorry, um, with, without its uh, special passive. The 40 magic resistance isn't nearly as strong as uh, the health that Knight's Vow grants. Um, health, you know, is, like I said, it's generally a better stat because it works against um, AP, or magic and physical damage, uh, whereas magic resistance only works against magic damage. The passive, if three or more enemy champions are nearby, grant 40 bonus armor and 40 bonus magic resistance. That passive is insane for value. For how much this costs, it's it's very cheap, it's 2500 uh, That's a... a a big con I mean a big pro about this item is that it's very cheap and the stats that it gives it is if you can get it proc it is it is a very good item but the problem is I think Riven is a champion who should usually be split pushing and then wait until I mean she she needs to be able to kill the person 100% in a side lane and gargoyle stone plate makes it like hurts your ability to do that a lot if you know they're just like the enemy team is just r running through your mid lane like you're just super far behind uh, they have a good mix of 
of physical and magic damage and you just you just have enough for this item that's pretty much when the only time i built this item and it has worked out when you know you're going to be team fighting and you, you uh like all all those uh conditions are met the active the active is fine for ribbon i don't really like it too much i would like it more if the if the item gave health but it doesn't and it, it works with your max health and uh, Riven doesn't usually build a ton of health so it's it's why I don't really it's another reason I don't like building this item I think that the active is fine you can you can go in you can use your whole combo and then you can use the active and just kind of sit there or just walk away um, usually you don't want to try to do a whole bunch of comp like a whole bunch of damage after the active since you're reducing your damage a ton um, it's I, I think the active is something that hurts Riven a lot more than other stoneplate users would would care about like a, a Maokai doesn't care about losing damage because all he is is a crowd control but Riven is with max CDR she's always hitting she always has abilities of she's always throwing in auto attacks between abilities there's never downtime for Riven it's like building a stone plate on Fiora, you know, like, just any of these people who are constantly hitting, like, they, they don't have, like, a big burst. Like, Riven has, has burst if you're building damage, which makes it to where you shouldn't be building this item. You shouldn't be building this item if you're going damage. It's, I was, I actually thought this item was going to be really strong uh, when I first saw it, but then I realized that you lose too much split push power with with this item and split push power is what ribbon needs uh, so i try to stay away from this item and i don't recommend it but in team fights if you're around the three or more enemy champions the item is great and it's great on other tanks next time spirit visage also have like abyssal mask in here i mean these items are just kind of these items are just bad the only time you would ever build Spirit Visage is if instead of Mal 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 Mortius, like you had a squishy jungler, you had to be the front line. Like you, you, you're definitely going with the Bruiser build. You're not just gonna build damage and decide, okay, I'm gonna build a Spirit Visage. You're not gonna do that. Um, if, if you see there's super heavy AP team comp, like I said, you can go with your magic resist runes, your your glyphs. You have no CD on your runes. You build Cleaver. If you, if they have like five AP or four strong AP, you can build Cleaver, Maul, and Spirit Visage. Only if you have a healing support like a Soraka, maybe a Sona, because what they did to Spirit Visage was put a lot of the gold uh, that you spent on this item, all the power, into the healing part of it uh, a lot of it used to just it used to just be like good base stats and it was like the passive was just it was just nice you know but they made they put a lot of power into uh, the the passive where you 30 percent of or all healing to that applies to you is increased by 30 percent you know it's like rock heals that's your lifesteal health regeneration uh, health regeneration is useless so it's pretty much just your lifesteal and heals from your supports. So you can only ever build this item, I think, if you're building other lifesteal, which you wouldn't build because you're running a bruiser build. You see you see where I'm going with this? It's like the only times you would ever be building this item, it would make it to where like your other items wouldn't work with this. Like you you're not gonna be building lifesteal with this, and if you were building life so you would just get something else so you just want to get spirit message um and you would have to have the right support for this which makes makes this item kind of dead it's just not good enough sorry same thing with the abyssal mask abyssal mask at at least the abyssal mask at some point i see being useful oh sorry sorry they changed I don't know if they changed this item. This item gives them mana now. I think they changed it. I didn't know it gave mana anymore. Completely ignore this item. 
Never built up. Two more items. Alright. Thorn Mail. 250 health, 75 armor. So you're thinking, like, why would I want this item over, you know, like, Dead Man's, Randoins? Because um, that, that's basically what it's competing for. Because you don't have enough item slots to actually. to usually build both of those items. Unless you were against like 5 AD, 4 AD, which happens a lot in all ELOs. I mean, you, you'll just get eight, you'll see Yasuo top, Master Yi, uh, Nar top, and you know, just your normal Caitlyn AD carry or something. That's 4 AD, and you might have like a Tarek support, or the damage doesn't matter. At this point, I mean, yeah, Thornmail's fine. Um, but Thornmail is an item you can only get now if you're building other armor items because they made it to where the passive like it only actually does damage if you're building bonus armor it's not even that much the, the reflection damage you put on thornmail is just terrible uh, it's mainly for the, the grievous wins um, so you you would like to build this item for people who or at least, at least building life steal. Maybe if the the Yasuo and Bloodthirst are kind of like how I was talking about. Like I don't like building Bloodthirster against Riven, or uh, as Riven uh, as much anymore because people are building Bramble Vest. If you see they're building a lot of life steal. Also, there's a passive with the Thornmail that it reduces uh, their attack speed uh, by 15%. Uh, I don't know. I, I think this item is pretty bad on Riven. Because I don't see her building a whole bunch of other armor items. And it's not good enough to just build by itself. Bramble Vest is okay. But if I were trying to get... like If I were trying to get Grievous Wounds. I'm just going to build a more Reminder. Like every time. I guess this item is... Is fine in lower elo. If they're building AD. Because just tank stats are easier to use. So if you want to go with... If you, if you see that you need to be tanky because they went all AD, feel free to build Cleaver, Dust Dance, Steric Gauge, Randolins, Thorn Mail, and Tabbies or something. I mean, that that's fine. But for the most part, just don't build a side if you If you need Grievous Wounds, just buy Mortal Reminder. Even if you're, even if you're going to want the Brizzard build. Let's build more reminder. Last item I have is Warmog's armor. 800 health, 200% base health regen, 10% CDR. It has the passive where if you have at least 2750 health, you proc the passive. Two per five, you gain 2.5% maximum health every half second if damage has not been taken. Um. I want to say I, I love this item. <laughs> I think this item is is really cool. Since they they changed it, they gave it quite a few buffs. They made the passive very easy to proc. The only other need, you only pretty much need like one, maybe two health items, and you're already building cleaver on ribbon. Um, sadly, this is just a pure tank item that battles with like it it. it con it conflicts with other CDR items. If it didn't give CDR and it gave another stat, like say it gave magic resist or something, then I would be building this item a lot. But I can't I can't find a way to fit this this item into even a bruiser build and get enough value out of it. If you're already if you're already building death stance, you usually don't need to sustain from more mugs. Warmogs to sustain is fantastic for just leaving a fight, uh, returning like 10 seconds later and coming back full. So I, I do think this item it isn't bad anymore, like it, it used to be completely trash. But I can't, I just can't see it on Riven right now. Maybe once runes get changed, uh, I, I just, I know that they're coming out with an overcapping rune, like overcapping CDR rune. And if, if that winds up being strong on Riven, which it looked pretty good when I saw it, I just don't know what its competition is. That's that's really... I, I, I can't determine whether it's strong or not yet. Um, 
at that point maybe I'll try to see if I can fit war mogs into <laughs> into my build because I love this item uh, just for its passive uh, until then just don't build this item I'm sorry <laughs> I, I try to make this item work but it's just bad I think that's it. I mean, I'm sure I missed some items. Don't flame me. I tried. I tried going over all the items I could find that weren't super troll or maybe just items that people thought about. And I think that's about it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, I'll try to answer them in the comments uh, when I get a chance. It's pretty late, so I'm gonna go ahead and head off to bed. You guys have a great night and good luck in Solo Q.